Faster! Faster! Get that blood pumping! Stop! Oh yeah! Steady as a clock. I am practically mud ready. What's up? I'm Haley, and I'm training for a mud run. And if you don't know what that is, well, it's exactly what it sounds like. There's a lot of running in the mud. I've got the running part down. I can run in place. I can run sideways. I can run backwards in a tight circle. All I need to do now is get used to the mud. And that, my friends, is going to take some perseverance. Perseverance is refusing to give up when life gets hard. I don't have any mud on me right now, so I'm training with the next best thing, full box. If I can run in that stuff, I can run in anything. So let's do this. Ah! Ah! Come on, don't, yeah, let's go. Oh, okay, uh, you can do it, Haley. This isn't gonna hold you back, uh, not at all. Not at all. Um, try swimming. Yeah, try a backstroke. No, a front stroke. We'll try a front stroke. Let's try a front stroke. This is working. This is working. Yeah, it's working. Come on. Now, where are my feet? Where are they? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Oh. What? not enjoying this. Oh, I thought mud runs were supposed to be, uh, supposed to be, supposed to be fun. Why would anyone do this to themselves on purpose? In today's story, Paul and Silas find themselves in a bit of a bind and it's totally nothing to sing about. I'm in a bit of a bind myself, but am I gonna let that get me down? I'll answer for you. Yes, yes I am. <laughs> ah! Come on! The Bible isn't just a book of random stories. It's 66 different books that come together to tell one story. An incredible one about God's love for us. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapter 16, verses 16 to 40. The city of Philippi in Macedonia stood proudly along a bustling Roman road not far from a busy seaport. Newly settled Roman citizens had mingled with the Greeks who had been there for thousands of years. Travelers from far off countries arrived by land and sea to trade at the marketplace. Perhaps this is why God called Paul and Silas to travel there. I've had a vision. A man begged us to come over to Macedonia. You didn't eat any bad sardines for dinner last night, did you? Nope. You sure this vision is from God? Yep. <sighs> Then, Macedonia or must. Paul and Silas traveled by boat and on foot to reach Philippi, one of the most important cities of Macedonia. The town was full of temples and altars for dozens of different Roman and Greek gods. But a handful of people worshiped the one true God. No synagogue. Let's go down to the river. At the river, Paul and Silas found a group of women who had gathered to pray and worship God. One of them, a successful businesswoman named Lydia, had become a believer in Jesus. Come, stay at my house. Lydia gave Paul and Silas a home in the city. They began to share the story of Jesus, and soon other men and women became believers too. Just think, Paul, these people are from everywhere. They'll take news of Jesus back home with them. All nations, just like Jesus said. But one day, as Paul and Silas made their way to the river to pray, a servant girl began to follow them and cry out, These men serve the Most High God. They are telling you how to be saved. Silas glanced back at the girl. Okay, so what she's saying is true, but something's not right. Uh, she's controlled by a spirit that doesn't come from God. The men she works for use it to make money. 
Though Paul and Silas ignored the girl at first, she followed them for days. Everywhere they went, these men serve the Most High God. They are telling you how to be saved. The girl's boss wasn't happy. Don't waste your time on these fools. They haven't paid me a penny. These men serve the Most High God. They are telling you how to be saved. Yeah, yeah, you said that. These men serve the Most High God. They are- Enough! Paul whipped around to face the girl and spoke to the spirit who was controlling her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. Immediately, the spirit left the girl. Her face changed. She blinked and stood straight and tall. What? What happened? I'm... I'm free! I'm me! The girl's bosses were not pleased. They snarled at Paul and Silas. She can't make money for us anymore. Mm, Jesus freed her. Will you rob yeah. her? The girl's owners grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them to face the city judges. A great crowd formed, jeering and shouting. These Jews are making trouble. They're telling us to do things against Roman law. Then beat them. Yeah. Chain them. Yeah. Toss them in jail. Yeah. You know, the scary part in back with those big creepy spiders. <gasps> Too far? Just as the judge ordered, Paul and Silas were whipped. Then they were dragged into the jail. Uh, let's see. Looks like you're registering for our deepest, darkest cell. It's included, free of charge. Though they'd done nothing but share the story and power of Jesus, Paul and Silas found themselves bruised and bleeding, trapped in a Philippian jail at midnight. Only one thing to do. Count spiders? <clears throat> The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Instead of complaining, Paul and Silas prayed and sang as the other prisoners listened. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. has got some pipes! The earth began to rumble. For you are with me. <laughs> the entire prison shook. Doors flew open, chains cracked. The jailer woke and scrambled from his bed, racing to the jail. They're gone. They've escaped. The jailer planned to kill himself, but Paul called out. Don't hurt yourself, we're all here. Light, get me some lights. Racing into the prison, the jailer fell down before Paul and Silas. What must I do to be saved? The jailer brought Paul and Silas into his own home. He washed their wounds and prepared a meal as his former prisoners shared the good news of Jesus to the entire household. Everyone was filled with joy and became a believer too. This, this changes everything. Early in the morning, the city judges sent out officers with an order to release Paul and Silas. You can leave now. Go in peace. Paul faced down the city officers. We were beaten in public and thrown in jail without a trial, even though we're Roman citizens. Oopsie! Your judges can't get rid of us quietly. They better come lead us out in person. Afraid they'd get in trouble for jailing Roman citizens? The judges skulked to the prison themselves. Um, sorry, about the spiders too. Just, uh, you know, leave, please. Once free, Paul and Silas returned to Lydia's home. They took time to encourage the new believers before they finally left Philippi to continue sharing the good news to new towns and new cities. I am feeling much better now, now that I'm out of the mud. But I'm wondering, is it possible to feel okay while I'm in the mud? I'll answer for you. It must be. I mean, look at Paul and Silas. They were able to have joy even though they were in jail and other people were saved because of them. That means we can have joy even when things aren't going the way we want or expect. We can actually choose joy. So how do we do that? How do we choose joy? Well, one way is thinking of joy differently. Having joy isn't the same thing as being happy. Things make you happy. 
circumstances make you happy, but joy is special. Joy comes when you put your trust in God. So when life gets hard, like maybe you're having a tough time making friends, or you're not getting along with your brother or sister, try not to focus on the things that are making you sad. Try instead focusing on the good things you know are true, like how God's powerful enough to create the whole universe, how he sent Jesus to save you, how he loves you no matter what. Find your joy in those things, and believe it or not, others will notice. They'll wonder where your joy comes from, and you can tell them it comes from putting your trust in God. The one thing to remember today is this, you can choose joy when life gets hard. This mud run training is gonna be hard. I'll probably get stuck a time or two, but I'm gonna focus on the good things, like how awesome it'll feel when I cross the finish line, and how thankful I am that God has given me the strength to do this. You know something? I think I'm ready for more. I think I might just find joy in the mud after all.